The Epistle of Jude, Contend for the Faith The Book of Jude is a Hebrew epistle written early during the Book of Acts, prior to Israel's being blinded in part for rejecting Jesus as their Christ. Romans 11 verse 25, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Jude is often called one of the general epistles by those who do not understand how to rightly divide the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. There is nothing general about any of the Hebrew epistles that follow Paul's epistles to the body of Christ. They are different. The Hebrew epistles are written to Israel, and they are doctrinally for them in the early Acts period, as well as during the time of Jacob's trouble, as you will see while you study these epistles. The words in Jude are very similar to many of the words found in 2 Peter, which is another Hebrew epistle, written to the twelve tribes of Israel that were scattered abroad. These two epistles are practically identical messages, and they even have verses that are almost word-for-word -word copies of the other at times. Jude 1 Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ, and called, Jude, also called Judas, Judah. Judah is Hebrew translated to English, while Judas is Greek translated into English. And brother of James, Jude is the brother of James. We see also another person named Judas, that is one of the twelve apostles mentioned in John 14 verse 22 as, not Iscariot, and also in Acts 1 verse 13. James here is not Jude's brother. He is not James the son of Alphaeus found in Matthew 10 verse 3, nor is it James the son of Zebedee, the brother of John, the sons of thunder, found in Matthew 10 verse 2. That means that he is not one of the twelve apostles. See verses 17 and 18 below, and you will hear from Jude himself that he is not one of the twelve apostles to the nation of Israel. Remember that the twelve apostles had a requirement to be one of the twelve. Acts 1 verses 20 to 22, for it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein and his bishopric let another take. Wherefore of these men which have companied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John, unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. When we read about Jesus' half-brothers, one was named James, and another was named Judas, Jude, but as late as three years into Jesus' ministry neither of them had begun to follow Jesus, let alone since the baptism of John. John 7 verses 2 to 5, Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence, and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known. Openly, if thou do these things, shew thyself to the world. For neither did his brethren believe in him. If they did not believe in Jesus as the Christ, then they could not have been a part of the twelve since the baptism of John. Could Jude be the half-brother of the Lord? Who does have another half-brother named James? Yes. What about the James that is killed in Acts 12? No, it is not him, as he is John's brother, not the brother of anyone named Judas. Acts 12 verse 2, And he killed James, the brother of John with the sword. To them that are sanctified by God the Father, just because we are sanctified in this dispensation of grace, does not mean that God did not sanctify others in other ages. It is obvious that he does from this verse. And preserved in Jesus Christ and called, many well-meaning people have used this first verse in Jude as a proof verse for eternal security. It is not. This is a Hebrew epistle that deals with Israel's kingdom saints in the first century, and those tribulation saints after the dispensation of grace is over, while Israel is going through the time of Jacob's trouble. In that time, Israel has to endure unto the end of that time period, to enter into her kingdom as Matthew 24 verse 13 says. Jude to mercy unto you, and peace, and love, be multiplied. Mercy unto you. In the tribulation period, they will be in need multiplied mercies from God to see them through it. Be multiplied. This is a word used by Peter in both of his epistles. The key verse of this epistle. Jude 3 Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you, and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. The common salvation. The purpose of this epistle was to preserve the message of salvation that was common among those kingdom saints that had been scattered abroad after the persecution of Stephen. Acts 8 verse 1. Israel is mentioned as a commonwealth in Ephesians when describing our separation from them. We Gentiles were outside the commonwealth of Israel. That message was the so great salvation mentioned by the writer of the book of Hebrews in Hebrews 2 verse 3. This is not the same gospel that Paul preached. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4. 
Peter calls the common salvation, like precious faith in 2 Peter 1 verse 1. It is the gospel of the kingdom found in the gospels. Matthew 4 verse 17, from that time Jesus began to preach, and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 24 verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints, this is that so great salvation spoken about in Hebrews that was delivered unto the twelve apostles. Hebrews 2 verses 1 to 4, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him, God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with divers miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. It is also an epistle to future Jews living under that same program during the tribulation period after the body of Christ has been raptured into heaven, when Israel is left to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah 31 verse 31 We are to contend today for the mystery program that Paul preached and the gospel that was given to him just like these are to contend for the kingdom message delivered to Israel by Christ and the twelve ungodly men. Jude 4, For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Ordained to this condemnation, this is speaking of false teachers in Israel in a different age slash dispensation than us today, who are in the dispensation of grace. People will sneak in and try to infiltrate and dilute the little flock in the tribulation period into believing the lie program of the devil. These people are agents of the devil, sent in by him in his plan that he devised, ordained, long ago, to try to deceive Israel, the kingdom people, into rejecting their king and the soon coming kingdom. Satan has a plan that he has ordained for the future, but it is terribly flawed because it relies on the wisdom of this world and not on God's wisdom which is flawless. Paul calls it the course of this world. Ephesians 2 verse 2, Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, sexual immorality. They were saying God is not pouring out his wrath immediately, so he is allowing them their fleshly desires, denying the only Lord God, and our Lord Jesus Christ, the ultimate act of denying the Lord Jesus Christ will be in taking the mark which will condemn all that take it, because they will be saying that the Lord cannot supply their needs if they trust in him during that time. Revelation 13, Jude 5 I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Jude has to remind these saints that their ancestors were delivered from Pharaoh, and yet they perished in the wilderness, because they did not believe that God could take care of them in the land. They were saved physically as a nation, but they were later destroyed individually as all the unbelievers died in the wilderness. The law would help them to be light in the land, and they would need to remember their nation's past mistakes, and not make the same mistakes during the tribulation period, or they too would not be allowed to enter into their rest. Those of this future generation need to contend for the faith once delivered unto them, or they also will suffer similar consequences. The angels that sinned. Jude 6, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. The angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, their leaving their first habitation speaks of them leaving their positions as servants of God in the heavens to follow Satan. These special angels also left to take the daughters of men as wives, and produce the giants that we read about in Genesis 6. Now he reminds the remnant of believers that God punished the angels that thought they could do as they wanted. God will punish those going through the tribulation period as well if they think they can pick and choose what they want to believe and do at that time. He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Notice the similarities with 2 Peter. 2 Peter 2 verse 4, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment. Jude 7 Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, 
Trusting in the works of the flesh is a first step in a downward plummet that leads people to give themselves over to the flesh and its deceitfulness. Romans 1 verses 18 to 32, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shewed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse, because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, and likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind, to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Sodom and Gomorrah are examples of what can happen to cities, or individuals, who give in to the desires of the flesh. They begin to leave that natural use of the opposite sex, and begin to burn in their lust for the same flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire, this is speaking of the people of Sodom and Gomorrah who were destroyed when God rained down fire and brimstone upon them and then cast them all into hell. This will also happen to all those who take the mark of the beast during the tribulation period. Ezekiel 38 verse 22 And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood, and I will rain upon him and upon his bands, and upon the many people that are with him, and overflowing rain, and great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Genesis 13 verses 12 to 13 Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Genesis 19 verses 24 to 25 Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven, and he overthrew those cities, and all the plain, and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. Jude 8, likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Despise dominion, this a reference to those who criticize those that God has placed in spiritual authority over them during the time they are in. Hebrews 13 verses 7 and 17, 24, Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy, and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. Salute all them that have the rule over you, and all the saints. They of Italy salute you. They despised the twelve apostles and their epistles, just like they will the leaders of the tribulation churches. When they speak evil against the leaders of the remnant slash little flock, they speak evil of Christ, the body of Moses. Jude 9 Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. The body of Moses. This was primarily about how Michael approached the devil in not railing on him. But the devils, and these who despise dignities do rail on dignities. Deuteronomy 34 verses 1 to 8 And Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the mountain of Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, that is over against Jericho. And the Lord shewed him all the land of Gilead, unto Dan, and all Naphtali, and the land of Ephraim, and Manasseh, and all the land of Judah, unto the utmost sea, and the south, and the plain of the valley of Jericho the city of palm trees, unto Zor. And the Lord said unto him, This is the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, 
and unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thy seed, I have caused thee to see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not go over thither. So, Moses the servant of the Lord died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Peor. But no man knoweth of his sepulchre unto this day. And Moses was an hundred and twenty years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abetted. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days. So, the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. When do we find Michael actually contending with the devil in the Bible? In Revelation 12, when he is cast out of heaven at the midpoint of the tribulation period. Revelation 12 verses 7 to 9, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Who tells us about Michael contending with the devil over Moses' body? Jude. When did this battle take place according to the Bible? The Bible doesn't say when it took place, only that it was past tense when Jude mentions it. When Michael was contending with the devil, he disputed with him over the body of Moses. Could Jude be speaking prophetically of a battle that is yet future, since he is writing to Israel about surviving the tribulation period? It is possible. Satan doesn't want the body of Moses to be resurrected in the tribulation period, because Moses appeared with Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus and he will also appear again with Elijah in the tribulation period. Satan thinks by capturing Moses' body, he can prevent his resurrection in the tribulation period and ultimately in the kingdom. When Michael was sent to prevent Satan's attempted body snatching, he disputed with him and did so within respect for the power given unto Satan. Michael respected that and said what needed to be said to accomplish his mission. The Lord rebuke thee. A railing accusation, cursing someone, the opposite of blessing them. 1 Peter 3 verse 9, not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. 2 Peter 2 verse 11, whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. Brute beasts. Jude 10, but these speak evil of those things which they know not but what they know naturally, as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. 2 Peter 2 verse 12, But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, as brute beasts, like an irrational animal. Similarities found in 2 Peter. 2 Peter 2 verses 1 to 3, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. The angels that sinned, that kept not their first estate Jude 6. 2 Peter 2 verse 4, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment. Noah the eighth person, see Enoch the seventh from Adam Jude 14. 2 Peter 2 verses 5 to 11, And spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished, but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness, and despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. Jude 1 verses 6 to 10, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil he disputed about the body of Moses, 
durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally, as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. 2 Peter 2 verse 12, But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Jude 10, But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally, as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. 2 Peter 2 verses 13 to 22, And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are in blemishes, sporting themselves with their own, deceivings while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way, and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam the son of Bozer, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumbass speaking with man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein, and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness, than, after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Jude 1 verse 11 Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Kor. Revelation 2 verse 14 But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak, to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. The error of Balaam, Numbers 22-24 Joshua 13 verse 22, 2 Peter 2 verse 15, and Revelation 2 verse 14. Jude 11 Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Kor. The way of Cain, to think that the works of their hands are good enough to satisfy God without simple faith. It is evident to all that Cain believed in God, but he didn't obey God and offer by faith what God wanted for a sacrifice. Tribulation saints will be offering the works of their hands and minds, but they will not satisfy God. Only faith which obeys without trying to alter God's request to appease the masses will satisfy God's request. These false teachers in this tribulation period will despise those in authority in the remnant churches, because they are of their father the devil. The error of Balaam. Balaam was a prophet hired by Balak, Balak, the king of the Moabites, to curse Israel, near Jericho. Numbers 22-25. Revelation 2 verse 14. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. They will say Christ's sacrifice isn't necessary, and they can offer the works of the flesh, and it will appeal to the masses. These are profiteers, not prophets, hirelings. The gainsaying of Kor, this is Korah who murmured against Moses and Aaron, saying everyone was holy whom the earth swallowed up with his family. Number 16, colon 1-3. Jude 12 to 13, these are spots in your feasts of charity, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. These are spots in your feasts of charity, the Greek word spot is spilos, where we get the English word spill from. It is what it is, a blemish, or a spot on something. In this case, the spots, plural, are sinners at a feast of charity, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness. According to this verse, the mark of the beast comes first, and the sore which is noisome and grievous falls upon those who already have the mark. The spots referred to in Jude 12 and 23 are not the mark of the beast. Revelation 16 verse 2 means what it says. Besides, the spots are people in these two verses that defile the tribulation saints' garments. 2 Peter 2 verse 13 And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, 
as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are in blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Jude 23. Those who change what God requires do not have a good ending. They are useless to the believer. In fact, they are there to slow the believer down and trip them up at every corner. They are constantly trying to get you to compromise and do things in a way that they would like that makes them feel good instead of God. They are like spots on a pure garment. The blackness of darkness. This is a further elaboration of Jude verse 6, where there are everlasting chains of darkness to arrest those angels who left their first estate. Matthew 8 verse 12, But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The darkness mentioned above is a complete darkness, described as a blackness. They will be judged. 2 Peter 2 verse 17, These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Ungodly. Jude 14-15 And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints, to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Deuteronomy 33 verse 2 And he said, The Lord came from Sinai, and rose up from Seir unto them, he shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of saints, from his right hand went a fiery law for them. Hebrews 11 verse 5, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him, for before his translation he had this testimony, that he pleased God. Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, that these are the ones that will have judgment executed on them in the tribulation period. James warns the believer that the world will throw all kinds of things at the believers in those days to get them to compromise. So, if everyone else is doing what they are doing, the believer must hold themselves to a higher standard than the lost world, especially at that time. Where did Jude get his information about Enoch's prophecy from? The Holy Spirit gave it to him because it is not mentioned in the Old Testament anywhere. The purpose of the book of Jude is to pronounce judgment on the nation of Israel that oppose and persecute the remnant of true believers in Israel, the Israel of God. Galatians 6 verse 16, And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. Jude talks about Enoch being the seventh from Adam, while Peter in 2 Peter 2 verse 5 talks about Noah being the eighth person. He was not the eighth from Adam, that would have been Methuselah. He was the eighth person on the Arkansas Aid in Scripture, means a new beginning. When is a Jewish child circumcised? On the eighth day, because God started something new with Abraham, circumcision, in establishing his own nation out of Abraham's loins. Jude 16, these are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words having men's persons in admiration, because of advantage. These are those who care about the numbers, the offerings, and the prestige and admiration of others. Jude 17-19 But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. The apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you, Jude does not put himself in as one of the twelve apostles and even distances himself from them making it clear when he mentions the apostles. He uses the word they instead of we. Many devout religious people will try to draw the believers away to what everyone else is doing, and they will deceive many. Mockers will try to embarrass believers in the tribulation period away from what they believe, but they should stand firm unto the end. Notice that Jude calls it the last time. It was the last time. The prophecy program got interrupted when the mystery program was ushered in. Once the mystery program runs its course and ends at the rapture, the prophecy program will pick up right where it left off at the end of the last time. There is also a last time in the mystery program. When you rightly divide, make sure you discern which last time the Bible is speaking about, Israel's, or the body of Christ's. An easy way to figure it out is if it is in the Hebrew epistles, it is speaking about Israel's last time, not ours. Notice that Peter's second epistles says the same thing as Jude's epistle does. 2 Peter 3 verse 3 Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts. Jude 20 But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, 
How will someone in the tribulation period build up themselves on their most holy faith? By praying in the Holy Ghost. They will be praying for the Holy Ghost as the apostles did in the upper room in the book of Acts. This is not something we can do today. We are not Israel receiving that which was promised to them in Joel chapter 2 and partially fulfilled on Pentecost. Their faith in Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God is their foundation just as it was in the gospel time period when the gospel of the kingdom was being preached to Israel by Jesus and the twelve apostles. They will need to build upon that foundation the advanced principles found in Hebrews through Revelation, and they are to pray in the Holy Ghost to guide them and to give them boldness to empower them in those last days. Jude 21 Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Keep yourselves in the love of God, this is something that the Apostle of the Gentiles never told any of us in the body of Christ to do in this dispensation of grace today, because this epistle is not for us today. 2 Peter 3 verse 17 Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. This epistle is for those Jews in the first century that were following the kingdom program, and for those of the tribulation period after the church is raptured out. We today in the dispensation of grace cannot keep ourselves in the love of God. God keeps us. Jude 22 to 23 And if some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh, pulling them out of the fire, the ultimate goal of earnestly contending for the faith once delivered to the saints in that program is to reach them before it is too late with the gospel of the kingdom. Matthew 4 verses 17 to 23, From that time Jesus began to preach, and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets, and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father, and followed him. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness, and all manner of disease among the people. The garment spotted by the flesh, the garment is their righteousness as it is stated in the book of the Revelation, it has nothing to do with the mark of the beast being a spot like a leopard has. Revelation 19 verse 8 And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Jude 24 Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, him that is able to keep you from falling. It is only Jesus Christ who can keep these kingdom saints from falling. Notice how Peter ends his second epistle very similarly. 2 Peter 3 verse 17 Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Both Peter and Jude warn their readers about falling from their own steadfastness and not being led away with the error of the wicked. It's almost as if Jude or Peter copied most of their epistle from the other. When it all comes from the same source, the Holy Spirit, then it will all agree. They will be faultless only because they will have Christ's righteousness. Jude 25, to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. We have noticed in this epistle of 25 verses the similarities with all of the doctrine found in Hebrews, James, Peter, and John's epistles, which also line up with the four Gospels and the first part of the book of Acts. They do not however line up doctrinally with the doctrines laid out for the church, which is Christ's body, which are found only in the Pauline epistles. This epistle ends with a similar ending found in 2 Peter, and the same theme and numerous verses are almost the same word for word. The Holy Spirit is the author of both of these two Hebrew epistles written to Hebrew believers of the gospel of the kingdom message proclaimed by Jesus and the Twelve.